Welcome back, everybody. This is Eric and Matt, and this is Life, Liberty, and the Pursuit, your beacon of freedom and the American way of life. Tune in every Friday for a new episode as we dive into the world of liberty and what makes our country great. All right, y'all, welcome back. This is Eric and Matt here with Life, Liberty, and the Pursuit. And I am very pleased to announce that we are doing another flight episode. And man, I love these. We get to drink, which I is know. always great. <laughs> Long overdue, man. Like Dude. We, it's always been like business when we, when we do these podcasts. And this is finally a time that we get to just like relax and, and let out, you know? Yeah. And, you know, we've done a lot of different fight or flight episodes with a lot of different uh, libations. But whiskey is one of my favorites, Man, if not my favorite. I know. And I know we've been talking about this. And, you know, just so you guys kind of get a little bit of an idea, w- whenever we set up to do podcasts, we'll try to do two or three episodes, sometimes four if we're feeling really frisky in one sitting. Mm-hmm. And we always like to end every day with a flight when we can. And I regret that the last couple of times we've gotten together to do podcasts, we haven't had the opportunity to do a flight. And man, I am here to tell you that we have some amazing stuff to try here. Uh, some of these uh, spirits here are probably ones that I'm, I'm, I'm more familiar with. In fact, some of these are already bottles that are open out of my personal stock. Others are ones that I haven't had in a long time, and some I've never had at all. So this is going to be a great experience for me to try some whiskeys. And today's flight... Uh, fight or flight episode, we're, we're kind of focusing on whiskeys of the world is sort of yes. what we're calling this. So this is whiskeys of the world. William Shatner, like, we, we they cannot kill us. <laughs> we must fight to the death or they will kill us both. That's right. <laughs> I love it. I mean, this, I mean, we've got a great spread here. And I mean, can I just go ahead and just tell them what we got? Let's go. So, yeah. Um, you know, from... You know, Ireland, we have Jameson, but it's Jameson Black. So Black Jam- Jameson's is one of the, the most well-known Irish whiskeys. I mean, you could even say it, and it's hard between Jameson's and, and Bush Mills. Those are pretty much the two very, very most common uh, Irish whiskeys. We did an entire flight of scotch. So we don't have any contenders from from Scotland here today, but we did an entire episode of just scotch whiskeys. Uh, that's its own flight. Um, we have... So... Gentleman Jack. There is some bourbon, and bourbon is whiskey, but whiskey is not bourbon. So these guys do get... Um, some chances here now gentleman jack is a tennessee whiskey which again is a separate is a separate thing so we have gentleman's jack we have maker's mark excellent i love it and i'm looking forward to it our great white north contender which is a <laughs> crown royale xr and it stands for extra rare extra rare so this is actually our most expensive bottle by a large margin, yes. I wanted to kind of include, and when we do a flight, we try to put at least one bottle in there that's like kind of bougie. Yes, and, and that's then, our bougie bottle is from our Canadian friends. Yes, and then we have two surprise guest appearances. One is a mini bottle of Yamazaki Twelve, so it's a single malt Japanese whiskey, and these are. Very, very hard to get in the full size cont- uh, full size bottles. If you find them here in the U.S. At, and you find it at MSRP, you can expect to pay about one hundred and fifty to one hundred and sixty dollars on the secondary market. Well, you know there is really is no limit. The price is what you're willing to pay for it, and they some of them go for quite a bit. Um, but we've been fortunate enough to get a mini bottle of 12 year old single malt but that's not all boys and girls and then we also <laughs> have been blessed to get a mini bottle of habiki 17 which they do they no longer make it this was replaced with a uh, habiki harmony so it's a blended a blended scotch style of whiskey from japan centauri and both of these are Suntory products. And if you guys aren't familiar, we've talked about it in the past. Suntory Distillery is would be the equivalent uh, in nature to like uh, Buffalo Trace. So they're the parent company, and then they create all of these really iconic 
you know, Japanese whiskey brands. So this is going to be an absolutely amazing pour along with uh, the Crown Royal and uh, the Yamazaki. The other ones I've had except for the Jameson, which is going to be. It's worth noting that my coffee that I drink on a regular basis is the Boss Premium Black that also comes from the Suntory uh, Distillery, and they actually make black coffee, the canned coffee. So we actually did an entire episode just on canned black Japanese yes. coffee. You can check that out if we you want. We were wired at the end. We were just like, uh, yes. we were shaking because we were just so caffeinated. We got some <laughs> really interesting results with that flight. And today, I think we're going to get into some interesting territory. So let's start out with Jameson. All right. And uh, I've got a couple of pages pulled up here. I'm just going to sort of give some background and do some reading. And uh, as always, Matt and I will trade off on the reads. And uh, I'll pour while he reads and he'll pour while I read. I'll go ahead and start us out. Um, so this comes straight from the Jameson website. Jameson Black Barrel. That's what we're going to start out with on today's flight. Our first one's Jameson Black Barrel. All right. Double charring the wood fires up the barrels and gives them new life. Untold richness and complexity awaits in every drop of Jameson Black Barrel. It's perfect on its own or on the rocks, but it's also commonly known as the best whiskey for an old fashioned. Don't trust us. Taste it. So, care to meet our beloved <laughs> Black Barrel Whiskey? All right. The nose. Time spent maturing in these barrels leads to intensified aromas of butterscotch, fudge, and creamy toffee. Taste. Um, nutty notes are in abundance alongside the smooth sweetness of spice and vanilla. Finish. Enjoy the richness and intensity of toasted wood and vanilla. So, it sounds like... They're going for that kind of Jack Daniels vibe. All right. Now, very quickly, we won't spend a lot of time on this, but I just pulled up a basic Wikipedia article because I want to mention the history of Jameson. Uh, they're a very old uh, distillery. Uh, John Jameson was originally a lawyer from Olada in Scotland before he founded uh, his distillery in Dublin in 18, or I'm sorry, 1780. Uh, previous to founding the distillery, he married uh, Margaret Haig, in 1768. She was the eldest daughter of John Haig, the famous whiskey distiller in Scotland. So they've been at this a long time. You know, yes. it's just really crazy to think that, you know, these businesses that are old school and tried and true and have such a rich history, it's just so interesting to see them kind of come into uh, their way, shape, and form of, you know, the modern world. So as a distillery in Ireland, they've been around since 1780. Really cool stuff. So uh, we're going to go ahead and give this beautiful whiskey a uh, nice little smell here. All right. Mmm. It, it's very smooth. It has a very smooth smell. Like mm -hmm. it, it, it doesn't come off as having a very like alcohol or ethanol type burn. Yeah. I will admit, when I read the description for this whiskey, I was thinking it was going to be like, you know, drinking cigarettes like Jack Daniels. Right. Look, no offense. I love Jack Daniels. But the straight up old school black label, you know, traditional Jack Daniels is a flavor to be, it, it is an acquired taste, in my opinion. And I always thought it had such a charred taste that it was, it was like drinking mm -hmm. an ashtray, which I was never a fan of. So I wondered if this Jameson offering that they were trying to go for that kind of, you know, charred old school Jack Daniels thing. But this kind of seems like they're doing their own sort of thing. It's got a beautiful color that doesn't have the dark, you know, sort of rich color of like old school Jack Daniels. All right. And it smells very smooth. This particular bottle, I think, was $38, by the way. So that gives you an idea. Uh, that's a 750 milliliter for about 38 bucks, which is, you know, definitely not bad for a more premium offering over the standard Jameson, I'd say. Well, yes. The, and the thing about Jameson is, is that it's got like a cult-like following because it's it was never marketed as a top shelf whiskey and it never tried to be a top shelf whiskey. Jameson knew its customer and knew its demographic it was like hey we're we're a an affordable great tasting whiskey we're not trying to masquerade as something we're not sure and that's really like how it became so popular is especially in the military it is an extremely popular in the military whether it's army marines navy like whatever it is 
you will find pallets of Jameson at any class six uh, on post as just that, that that's their market. Yeah. Um, what I will say is that one of the differences between Jameson and uh, say like Johnny Walker is Johnny Walker kind of went the route of like creating different recipes to, to try to, you know, fulfill that same mission. They're like, Oh, we have red label and green label. And it gets a little bit confusing. Yeah. Jameson just said, you know what we're going to do? Jameson whiskey. And then we're going to do like a black version, which is like triple distilled. It's a little bit smoother apparently Mm -hmm. than, than standard. Let's give it a taste. Yes. It's smooth. It definitely is smooth. That would be real nice on the rocks. Yes. With a cigar, you know? Now, I do think that maybe triple st- distilling it made it a little bit more smoother. Maybe took out some of those impurities uh, that you would normally find in something that's not distilled that many times. Um, I mean, overall... It's delicate. It, yeah, it was very smooth. Um, and it has a really good finish. Like it's not doesn't burn your throat. Not burning. It is not what I like. I've tasted some bargain whiskeys that it has like a like a really high alcohol finish, like an ethanol finish, like Jack. Yes, like a sour mash style finish. This is it. Definitely was good. This is very refined. Yeah, it, I could, it, This tastes like a much more expensive bottle than what it costs. Yes, I mean I'm. We're probably gentleman Jack is probably going to be up next i would probably put that on par uh with gentleman's jack but we'll find out we certainly will all right i'm going to pull up our page here just give me a moment here but you know i love the nose on this one it 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 smells beautiful it had um it had good legs as they say in the as a sommelier would say um and the finish was good it had it had really good caramel notes was that one of the tasting notes on there um i don't recall i don't have the the, the thing pulled up anymore uh, I'm, I'm just gonna double to check Jack. because it had like a it had some caramel notes on there yep all right we're gonna get into jack daniels here um just give me a moment y'all i'm pulling up the page here okay i was gonna look at um uh, you know sort of give a brief kind of history of Jack Daniels as well, since, you know, we just, we just drug them through the mud talking about yeah, car- how they're, caramel they're, is number two on the list. Yeah. So yeah, it definitely had like notes of caramel, not too sweet. Um, let's just review the, the notes, grassy malt, caramel, butterscotch, and a light fruit l- lazale makes their way out of the glass, followed by some nice lemony citrus. I didn't get the lemony citrus, but I definitely tasted on Maybe the caramel the and the butterscotch. In the finish, we might have gotten a little yeah. bit of citrus. But, but guys, it's, it's, I I would say that's a good that's a good pour if you're looking for a a budget friendly Irish whiskey or just whiskey in general. That that could be a sipper all day. Okay, so the next one is going to be Gentleman Jack. Um, all right, why don't you get on, get into some reading, Matt, and I will pour. Okay, we'll tr- trade jobs for a moment. So, if you guys aren't familiar with Jack Daniels, um, they're probably one of the most well-known brands in whiskey. Uh, And what makes them unique is that they are a Tennessee whiskey, which is different than uh, any other whiskey or a bourbon. Um, It was founded by Jasper Newton Daniel, more commonly known as Jack introduces he introduced the world to his recipe old number seven which is what you see on the marketing that that cool like logo the the font logo and all that cool stuff it's one of those logos that gets copied and repeated everywhere you go um it was inspired by the founder um it undergoes a second charcoal mellowing to achieve exceptional smoothness. So that is actually one thing that was unique at the time. They were one of the first companies to filter through charcoal. Now it's actually very common. So almost every whiskey or bourbon distiller will filter it through charcoal. Um, But that gave it that unique taste as well as it being a sour mash recipe. So if you're not used to Tennessee whiskey, 
like Eric is not used to it, it will have, it's an acquired taste. It definitely. I certainly was not trying to apply that it wasn't good. <laughs> I mean, I believe me, I've drank my share of Jack Daniels in my day and I've mixed it with a heck of a lot of things. Yes, too. you definitely, it was always known to me as a Jack and Coke. That's it, right. it was never like a, let Sit me get a Jack on the rocks. It was like yeah. Jack and Coke. You know? All right. Now, another important aspect before we get too much further, I do always like to mention the marketing and the uh, the look of the bottles. I feel like the way that something is marketed and the appearance and everything has a lot to do with the palatability of it, not only in the taste, but but look, our eyes taste it first, right? We look at the bottle, we look at the labeling, we look at the branding. So let's go back to the Jameson just for a moment before we give this uh, gentleman Jack a nose here. And we can see, you know, the bottle. Look, it's a Jameson bottle, right? Like like Matt said, nothing complicated going on here. It's Jameson, and they're they're completely happy with their with their traditional type of arrangement. A very simple bottle, very simple marketing. Um, nothing overly flashy or showy. Very traditional, which I can appreciate. Okay, so the Jameson. Look, what you see is what you get, and I can appreciate that. Now let's move on to the gentleman Jack. Uh, the bottle is very distinctive. I really do like the way that they went with, so the shape of this bottle almost reminds you of a flask. You notice that? It looks more, it's more for like the discerning mature gentleman yeah. versus like the old school, like just standard old number seven bottle. Yeah. You could tell who they're marketing that yeah. to. It's a little more refined and you can tell that they're, they're kind of going for a person who maybe wants a little bit more of a discerning Jack Daniels experience. Yes. So I, I think that they totally nailed that. Uh, both. Uh, so the Jameson bottle has a just pull cork uh, top with looks like a wooden uh, stopper. This one has a just traditional uh, plastic and metal cap you know pretty basic doesn't quite have that refined look in that regard but great marketing it looks like something i want to drink let's give it a smell now just to touch on that it says that um this particular whiskey the main difference is that it is double mellowed and it's filtered through charcoal before being filled into the barrel so that was one of the big differences a lot of bourbons and whiskeys are filtered as it comes out of the barrel this hmm. is being filtered before it goes in so it's interesting yeah hmm. well let's give it a nose here see what it smells like woo <laughs> i mean it's super <laughs> sweet and fruity i will tell you that but it also has that very alcohol smell like like i it, it just gives me the vibe that when i drink this i can spit fire you know like you see those people do <laughs> yeah. like it ha definitely has much more of an alcohol like kind of vibe to it than the jameson that has this kind of sweet and smooth vibe going on so let's say the tasting notes um the nose is going to be spicy so you that you did pick up on that spicy with caramel charred oak and a little and a seed the palate licorice with oak and cinnamon and a touch of banana. And then the finish is roasty and toasty. Plenty of spice and citrus too. So I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that the the term spice is code for like alcohol or like ethanol or, you know, methanol or whatever that, whatever that heat is yeah it's uh gonna be their their term for spice i mean i really do appreciate the work that jack daniels puts into their into their spirits um let's give it a try yeah let's just let let if, the proof if, be in the pudding if i remember correctly i did not like this because it was a little too smoky and you know that goes back to the scotch thing i'm not a huge scotch fan because it's now, super i love scotch this will so for me right th this alley. may appeal to me more than matt yeah. so here we go we're gonna give it a taste Oh, that was not what I expected. I'm pleasantly surprised. I, that's I, I did not expect that. It's not bad. It's not not amazing. But actually, you know what? It's finishing quite nice. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait. I, a I'm, I must say that I, I was pleasantly surprised at the outcome. The 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 nose kind of 
lied to me a little bit. Like I, I thought it was going to be harsher than it yeah. was. It was much smoother than I expected it to be. And I would imagine, I'll, you know, pour it over some rocks. Be quite a refreshing. You know pour. what? I like that. That has a really, really good finish. It was very smooth. It had a sweet finish. It wasn't too strong. I didn't quite pick up on the spice as much as they led on to believe. I'm but definitely overall, getting that banana vibe. Yeah, yeah. I, you, you can too. you can totally taste that kind of sweetness yes. in there, and it has a distinct aroma of banana as you as you're I drinking mean, it. You can kind of smell. I like it, man. I I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say I like that better than the Jameson. Hmm. I mean, the Jameson. I don't is know, good. friend. I don't know if I'd go that far. I mean, for me, for some reason, like that finish, like that last 15 seconds yeah. of it, like it was really good. I must say, it is quite smooth. Yeah. I'm torn myself. Now you have me second guessing <laughs> myself. Uh, now, kinda... it's worth noting that this particular bottle was a, roughly the same price. I think the when I bought this Gentleman Jack, it was like $42. So it might be 4 or $5 more expensive yeah. than the Jameson. And there's a, probably a fair amount of that is branding. So, I mean, I, sure. would, I, would, I would say they're on equal Tit footing. Tit for tat, yeah, I'd say they're, they're equal. They're equal. Oh, and by the way, uh, obviously this is a U.S. offering. So yes. we went from... <laughs> Uh, Ireland to the United States. Yep. Tennessee whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> so what would you like to try next? Um, Perhaps I mean, makers? Yes. We'll do makers and then I guess we'll round it out with uh, XR and that, then we'll yeah. do, then we'll do the Centauri's. Okay. All we'll, right. we'll go with the Japanese whiskeys last. Save the best for last. Is that what no, you're saying? Not necessarily. <laughs> I think that they are just on a okay. different continent. Like Let's they're see. way out. And I think the flavor profiles are going to be completely different than what we have here. All right. So it is worth noting that when it comes to Maker's Mark, of course, anytime you go to these websites, you have to uh, put in your birthday. Hang on a second. I'll get this in there. Uh, it's worth noting that anytime you are looking at Maker's, you know, there, there's usually a number that is associated with the bottles. And uh, so they are actually numbered by batches and all. So yes. when it comes to the cast strength makers, just bear in mind that you might get a little bit of variance in the overall vibe um, of the spirit. Uh, and I'm not going to dare say, oh, well, this one's better, that one's better, or this particular one. So the way I'm approaching this is all we can do is look at what we're drinking right here in front of us. And um, I guess... Um, We'll we'll see what what uh what's the number on that one? So this is one hundred and twelve proof, at fifty six point two five percent. What's ABV. the batch number on that? The one? batch number is twenty one dash zero eight. Okay, twenty one zero eight. So that's what we're running here. And these are all gonna like like uh like it says the proofs are gonna be different based on how it comes out of the barrel. So right. this can range anywhere from one hundred and eight to one hundred and fourteen. Let's see. Now, I will say that is interesting because Booker's, um, Booker's, which is a barrel proof bourbon as well, will typically run up to 125 to 126 proof, which is quite high as well. Um, yeah. And we'll maybe, maybe, you know what? Maybe we'll add that one to the list. We'll do that as well. So this is a stout one here. Oh, yeah. All right. So Maker's Mark cask strength and again this is um you know here in uh here in kentucky okay so we've gone from tennessee uh to kentucky correct yeah maker's marks in kentucky okay all right so maker's mark cask strength all right and um matt is going to give us a little pour here and i'll do some reading here this is maker's mark bourbon in its purest form bottled at barrel proof and non chill filtered, Maker's Mark cast strength ranges from 108 to 114 proof depending on the barrels. So, again, each batch kind of having its own different, you know, character to it. All right. Surprisingly smooth, this bourbon retains the signature front of the palate flavors of Maker's Mark while amping up the notes of oak, caramel, vanilla, and spice. And look, I just want to be completely transparent with you when I was shopping for all of this whiskey. I went to the whiskey section and I just grabbed whatever it said in the whiskey section. So I didn't know this actually is bourbon. And that's, that's one of the things I've always been kind of con confused about is where they'll say Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey or, you know, what makes a bourbon a bourbon and a whiskey a whiskey. I know that we have, you know, sort of talked about that, that distinction a little bit, 
but I didn't know that this was considered more of a bourbon than a whiskey. I and didn't well, know that. Like we said, bur- all bourbons are whiskeys, but not all whiskeys are bourbons. So ah. bourbon, the differentiating factor is that they have to be produced in new uh, charred white oak mm. barrels. Okay. So what you'll see is like whiskeys can be finished in sherry casks. They can be finished in any other type of cask. Yeah. Bourbons have to be finished a certain way. Well, be that as it may, we are totally going to try it out. Okay, tasting notes. The aroma, big oak, vanilla, and smoky charcoal. Mm. The taste, richer, more robust flavors of spice, vanilla, and smoke. Smoke tells me charcoal. Yes. <laughs> I mean, like when I hear a charred oak barrel, that's what I'm thinking is that it always makes me think of that Jack Daniels ashtray kind of thing. I digress. I'm not gonna not gonna pass judgment. Finish, longer finish on front of tongue with no roughness or bitterness. Wow, that's a strong order. Proof 108 to 114. Wow. So what I will say is this Beautiful. is a barrel proof. I don't believe it is straight from the barrel. Now there are there are whiskeys and bourbons that they literally pull that tamp out of the barrel. And there is, what do they call that? All right. So Maker's Mark on their website actually mm-hmm. provides a pretty good explanation. Oh, so nice. Let, yeah, let's, they actually have a little area where they, they teach you about it. So uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and read this. I think it'll be interesting. This will give us an idea of what this means when we say cast strength. This is Maker's Mark with nothing added to get in its way. Certainly not a beginner's bourbon. Maker's Mark cast strength is for the enthusiasts who's after bold flavors and higher proofs. After being screen filtered to remove wood pieces and char, Maker's Mark cast strength goes straight to the bottle at the range of 108 to 114 proof. This wouldn't work with just any whiskey. Maker's Mark cast strength is well crafted with carefully selected ingredients and aged until it's just right. While it may seem like a recent addition to the Maker's family, in truth, cast strength has always been at the core of every bourbon we produce. Even before we decided to put this premium bourbon in a bottle, Maker's Mark cast strength served as the base of the original Maker's Mark. It's also the foundation for the bourbons in our wood finishing series, Maker's Mark number 46 and Maker's Mark Private Selection. So hopefully that gives us a bit of an idea. Too good to keep barreled up. Through the decades, fans of single barrel and barrel proof bourbons have inquired about when Maker's Mark would release one of its own. And the philosophy at the distillery was always to remain true to Bill Sr.'s taste vision. But after releasing Maker's Mark 46 and actually tasting the stuff right out of the barrel, our thinking on a barrel strength release evolved. It does taste very good coming out of the barrel. All right. Well, let's uh, give it a smell. Well, I can say the color is just beautiful. It's, it it's is. just it's like a, a, a gorgeous very, amber. Yes. It reminds me of like when you see those... Uh, like pre- scotch. The, well, the prehistoric insects inside of that amber yeah that's yeah. what that looks like it totally does yeah it does it's beautiful all right let's give it a smell oh wow yeah that smells really good wow you can tell that's a cut above definitely <laughs> like you smell that and you think it's just it smells like so smooth it almost smells like dates like you know like a like yeah we spent a lot of time on around date trees we know yeah, we did <laughs> We ate some too, yes. right? Out, yeah. All right. Hmm. Raisins, mm-hmm. dates. Yeah, that raisiny leather. Date. Leather or charcoal? I would say raisins, dates, and maybe a little char. Yeah, agreed. Maybe a little char. Oh, my mouth is watering. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> wow, that's really good. Wow, it's that's like, fantastic! Yeah, it sticks to the you can see Ooh, it, it sticks to it. the glass and yes. it sticks to your ribs. Like as it's going down, it, it's like sticking to my insides. Like look at this, man! It's like syrup almost. It's filling my insides with this warmth, like yeah. a comfortable warmth, not a burning sensation. Like wow, this is harsh, but like a an inviting warmth. No, it's like if, really, if it was really, really cold outside and you want to just go out on the porch and just in the middle of the snow and just drink this, it mm-hmm. would just warm you from the inside. It's, just, it's, it's it's another level. Like it's just, you can tell like there's different levels to making this. And yes, I understand Jameson is good whiskey and Gentleman's Jack is good whiskey. But guys, when you start stepping up into more of like the 
private selection and more of like the and I wouldn't even say this is a super high end bottle or high end by any means. It's just a very it takes someone that's willing to step outside of their comfort zone. Like a forty two dollar bottle. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean wow. it it that's really good. And I've always I've been had a fan. This before. Yeah, I've always been a fan of Maker's Mark. It's got the iconic they have the iconic bottle. It has the wax dripping down the side of the bottle. Um, I mean, it's just iconic. That was probably the best marketing tool that they've ever introduced. Yes. Was the wax. Yes. You know? And you know it's laborious. Yes. You know it takes they time. They still do it by hand. You know it costs yeah. money for them to do it. But you know what? It's become an integral part of their very marketing. Yeah. And that's something worth noting. Maker's Mark has defined what it means to make a statement with their marketing. Now, what I will notice is that they used to stamp the top of the bottle. So they used to have like a little hand stamp that they would like, yeah. they would dip it and they would smash it down and you would see it. But that wow. is an excellent, excellent pour. Like wow. for the money, bar none, that is probably so as good far. As you're this get. one is definitely the winner out of yeah. the three. But now I have a feeling that we're about to crush that. Yes. <laughs> We're going to go up to our friends in Canada. The Great White North. The Great White North. And wow. we're going to have one of the premium Crown Royals. Now, uh, this, look, we have to go into this, Matt, being fair, because this bottle, look, let's look it up. Let's see, uh, Crown Royal, and I'll, I'll have to overcome the, uh, let's see, it's Crown Royal XR. All right, so just a quick search. Uh, oh, <laughs> holy Moses. Well, <laughs> let, look, um, this bottle is a $700 bottle according yes. to this website. Now, of course, I don't know how true that is. But so I acquired this XR through one of my local shops and they were running like a little bit of a sale. I guess they were having like an inventory reduction sale and I was able to score three bottles of XR. So we're actually dipping into one of my bottles, and I was lucky enough to score these bottles for one hundred and fifty-nine dollars a piece. That which is a steal. I think is a steal. Now, we're gonna look at XR. Now, Crown Royal, you know, is a staple of a drink, and uh, one thing that I must mention as well is that when you look at, uh, hang on, I got to get the the birthday in here. So every alcohol website you go to. Uh, they're they're going to require you know you put the uh, the birthday in there and all. Hang on one second, boys and girls, just a moment, my lovelies. Okay, now we we've got our page pulled up here. All right, yes, I'll accept your cookies. <laughs> okay, wow, what a beautiful bottle. Um, so it looks like it's probably your turn to read, Matt, and my turn to pour. Correct? Right? You poured the yes. last round, so I'll pour these. We got some nice tasting notes here from the uh, Crown Royal website. This is coming directly off the website, and wow, what a what a what a very like starkly distinctive and direct description of this spirit here on the website. Very basic tasting notes. Um, yep. So, so it, I'm going to start you out here, and wow, what a beautiful bottle. So I mean, Crown Royal, yeah, well, Crown Royal is probably one of the most well-known brands because even okay, imagine this. Even growing up as kids, we all knew the purple bag. We used to have, all the kids would have like that purple bag with the gold ropes on it. And we would use it to carry stuff like marbles oh, yeah. and rocks and toys. Like we would have those at school. We didn't know what it was. We're kids, man. But Look, a buddy of mine drinks so much Crown that he saved all the purple bags and made himself like a smock that's sick <laughs> out of crown royal bags now look listen okay drink responsibly okay like i'm not gonna say anything negative because the man's my friend and i think very highly of him he's a really good guy but everything in moderation okay you know be smart about it it's okay to enjoy a little drink with some friends every now and then and look i'm not trying to be preachy but be careful don't get out there and drive Right, you know, be careful. Get yourself a DD. Do everything in moderation. You know, spirits are meant to be enjoyed in in a, in moderation and with with some respect for the people that made the alcohol. Right, so you know, don't just ram it down. Like, take some time and enjoy it. Take some time to smell the roses. Yeah, right? don't, don't disrespect the distiller that way. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. I'm just joking. So here's um, our description. So yeah, I mean, that. so Crown Royal staple, very well known Canadian whiskey. 
uh, taste the rarest in our extra rare, rare whiskey yeah. series. Yes, so they have a blue bottle. Mm-hmm. Look at that. I know. Let me grab that bottom. Like fancy box. I know, man. Look, look at the, look at that. I would expect nothing less. Blue pouch. Breaking the mold, Isn't man. That beautiful. Can you see that, boys? And, girls? and the color on it is absolutely beautiful. It's like a deep amber. I don't think they had an age statement on it, but. It's safe to say it is a blended Scott, uh, blended Canadian whiskey. So, taste the rarest in our extra rare whiskey series, handcrafted, ooh, with a unique <laughs> blend that includes one of the final batches of whiskeys from the renowned La Salle Distillery. Experience its sophisticated blend of dried fruits, always a good sign, and honey, in a harmonious balance. Oh my God! Isn't that beautiful? We are about to get lit. Um, harmonious balance with spicy notes of Canadian rye, finishing in a lovely round taste of raisins, cocoa, and brown sugar. Those are all excellent flavors. Isn't that a beautiful box? Dude? It is, Look man. The, so again, we'll just hang on. I'll get back to the microphone. So, all right, I've got us poured up here. Nice. Um, all right. So again, marketing. Now, if you pick this bottle up off the shelf. I mean, it's in this beautiful blue box with this golden pillow in the bottom and this beautiful blue bag. And man, the bottle itself, it's like this is getting into the type of thing where when you're done with the spirit, you're going to want to wash this bottle out and keep it because it's just so beautiful. How could you throw that away? Look at that bottle. Oh, and it just looks amazing. Like it looks like a, a bottle of Louis almost, like Louis the Thirteenth. which if you guys are familiar... Louis the Thirteenth is a cognac that is probably one of the most expensive bottles that you're gonna find. Tastes yeah. very good, very smooth, but you know you can expect to pay about six hundred dollars a pour for it. Very good stuff, though. So, okay, without getting too far ahead of ourselves, mm -hmm. don't smell it yet. Nope. Now, when you look at the presentation of this bottle, you look at the the beautiful blown glass bottle and the gold pillow and the blue box. And it's got the, you know, beautiful blue and gold pouch and, and just, wow. It just looks like something royalty would drink. Mm -hmm. Your expectations, Matt, are pretty high, correct? They would be. And especially at the price point, you would want, your expectations are significantly higher than say, right. you know, a bottom shelf whiskey. Sure. Now, you know what you've already tasted. Yes. We're going to keep that in the back of our minds. Mm -hmm. So let's just have a look at the color. Again, beautiful amber color. Yes. And it definitely, oh my God. The way it's quite it, a healthy pour, but you know what? I have a, let's enjoy this. Well, look, just <laughs> roll it, man. Roll it around and watch how that sticks to the side. It's insane. That sticks more than the maker's mark. That is absolutely insane. I have high expectations. The mouth, the, the mouth feel, as they say. Give it a smell. Oh, oh, that's divine. Oh, absolutely divine. Oh my gosh. When they say like raisins and dates would probably be an understatement. That's so sweet. I would Dude. say like raisins and honey for sure. Like 100% they nailed it. Brown sugar all the mm. way. Dude, holy Even after crap. three other drinks, my mouth is still watering. Yes, like my body wants to receive yeah. this so bad. Let's give it a taste. All right. Whoa. I'm just letting it wash over my olfactory gland. Wow. That's really, really good, guys. It's so smooth. Holy and it's smokes. Very dude. light. Mm. Wow. Dude, that wow. I'm has I'm to speechless. be the best glass of alcohol I've probably ever had in my life. Like that's, that's better good. than Eagle Rare. I mean, it is a, it is in a different class than Eagle Rare. I it's mean, better than 18-year-old McAllen. I mean, I'm not a huge Scotch fan. If you say it's better than 18-year-old McAllen, that's... I've had a 25-year McAllen. Mm -hmm. This is on par with a 25-year McAllen. I mean, it's extremely smooth. 
Wow. Yeah. What a great drop. Very good. Wow. I mean, they did not disappoint. Going in for seconds. Third and fourth and fifth and sixth. <laughs> it's got great legs. Wow, man. Mouthfeel is on point. You don't need ice. You, you don't need, definitely don't I, need ice, guys. Do not torture this beautiful no. libation with ice. Drink it right out of the glass as it's intended. Wow. That's very good. Wow. Dude, mm. I am blown away at the quality of this drink. Like, you, that, that is the epitome of smooth. Like, when, when you drink, when you give that drink to somebody and they drink it and they look at you and go, that's smooth, that's an understatement. That is like one step above water. Like the flavor is popping, but the drinkability is like water. Gosh, yeah, dude, it's really this, good. This is on fire, dude. Yeah, this you is, better be glad you stocked up on that. Oh my god, I have li- <laughs> I have three bottles. I'm so lucky that I scored these bottles for hundred and fifty nine dollars a piece. Yeah, wow, that's really good. I enjoyed that, dude. Thoroughly. It's so fantastic, guys. If We're, you guys have the opportunity to get out there and get it, that's not. Like seven hundred dollars, I would probably get it. My description, the words coming out of my mouth, cannot describe how good this is. I, I, I will, can't describe it. I will tell you that that is probably the most accurate non-marketing tasting notes I've ever tasted. Because mm-hmm. everything, you know how most of the time when you're reading the the tasting notes, a lot of it is like marketing fluff. It's like caramel and yes it does taste a little bit like caramel it tastes a little bit like bananas but this 100 percent tastes like dried fruits i can taste it honey you can taste it canadian rye wow i mean raisins cocoa brown sugar you can taste all six of those at different intervals Dude, so you can taste it the i'm gonna whole tell time. you right now our japanese friends have a lot to step up to i mean this yeah. is hard to follow well it is going to be different because those are more on the scotch style of distilling so it is probably going to be a little bit more smoky That's more my vibe. yeah a little yeah. bit more smoky a little bit more technical i would probably say that it's more of a technical type of drink than a harmonious one dude, but who knows they're japanese what they can, an they approachable totally... drink yeah dude i like it i love it that's great well done yes well done wow great white north i, I hate to to continuously <laughs> beat the dead horse but wow so let's say the nose rich and complex with dried fruits and honey true check yep palate lightly sweet with spicy notes of canadian rye I mean, I'm not 100% sure the differences between Canadian rye and American rye, but I'll give it to you. It tastes, it tastes on point. Beautiful. And the finish, long, peppery, and warm with hints of raisins and brown sugar. Nailed I mean, it. Yeah. Everything Nailed on it. there is 100% true. Wow. Holy Lovely. crap. That is so good. Wow. I'm going to be tr- super drunk at the end of this. <laughs> <laughs> that was a really big pour, and I drank every bit of it. Mm. You know what? I'll take it. Yeah. Wow. I, I'm just blown away. Ooh. Like, I need a moment. Like, I need some time to take this in. Yeah, like, to I'm digest still, that and, and yeah. accept it. For this what is an it experience. Is. Yeah. Like, drinking this is an experience. Was that your Was that your first time having that? Yes. I'm glad I've never could, had the XR. I'm, I'm glad I could share so that. It's the first with time you. on camera, like <laughs> on camera right here, is the first time I've cracked this XR. I bought three of them mm-hmm. and I've never had it until now. That was mine as well. I'm glad I could share this experience with you, Eric. Life changing. Tink. Tink. Right, we're kind of far <laughs> apart. All right. All right. We're going to get back to, back to the flight. But wow, so far, I'm on cloud nine. Yeah, that is probably, I mean, that is definitely up there with, with one of the best that I've ever had. And I've had wow. some really good pours. I mean, we're talking like Pappies. We're talking like Louis. I mean, Louis is in another level. You're talking like... Ray Mournier, 1880. Yeah, you're talking like... Cognac, yeah. Yeah, you're talking like 80, 90-year-old Cognacs. I mean, it's, it's Yeah, or like Sam Adams Utopias. Yeah. Like it. So we are going to do a flight, boys and girls, on some really bougie beers. Mm-hmm. And uh, recently I had a Sam Adams Utopias. 
and I braked one out for some company and they've never even heard of it. And of course, not to get off on this tangent, but Sam Adams Utopias is a really interesting drop of beer. So we're going to do a bougie beer flight next. I think that should be the next episode. Write that down. All right. So we don't forget. Down. Bougie beer. Okay. But wow. What a statement. Dude, that was that was an excellent, what excellent pour. a statement. Holy crap, Matt. That Oof. is fantastic. It it met my expectations and took them completely into outer space. Like there I could not have expected that to be ten percent of what it was. It, it was just amazing. It really was. And I would highly recommend anybody that has the opportunity to try that. Let's see. Give it a go. Yama. So what's our next one? Uh, I want to pull up you know, a page. I gotta do a let's do the hab- no, let's do the Yamazaki because the Yamazaki, Yamazaki Twelve you can still buy. Can it's you just, pass that to me so yeah, I can pull up the page? I want to. I've got to do the read on this one. Oh. I mean, I can. I can do the read if you need me to. I'm, just, I'm familiar. Are with you me. suggesting that I can't read? No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just messing with you. All right. Yep. Y- Yaka Yamazaki. Y- Yamazaki yep. Twelve. All right. Hang on. Twelve year statement. Mm-hmm. Here we are. All right. And I'm sure Centauri is going to make me put in my age because that seems to be the the norm now. Let's see what they say. They say uh, Japanese, <laughs> you speak from Diaphragm. Let's see what we have here. You. It's taking a minute. Now. <laughs> Slow internet connection. I guess it's it's got to... Oh, yep. Yep. Asking for the birthday. What is it? I'll your put in birthday? some fake bull crap. <laughs> okay. Enter the site. Oh, wow. Wow. Look at that beautiful photo on the website. Wow. Look at that. So what beautiful m- photography. Let man. me tell you, man. My brother in law was he lived in um Japan. He was a naval naval contractor for the DOD. And he's the one, he's got like he he was he gifted me these mini bottles. Okay. And he got an opportunity to go visit the Centauri distillery. And they actually have these thirty and forty year old bottles available. To, to taste so you can at the end of the tour it's almost like you go to like the the any distillery here in the u.s like the buffalo trace distillery but imagine getting to try the rarest of the rare like the super limited barrel stock that they have and getting an opportunity to drink that and it's not even that expensive so he was telling me it was like 30 dollars for a pour of like the 40 or 50 year old Yamazaki. I'm like, that's insane, man. All right, let me get my radio voice going. I try to embellish a little bit. I hope you, you guys don't mind. You know, when I'm doing the reads, I, I try to, you know, get in there and really get my radio voice going. Yeah, man, let's do yeah, it. Who knows? You know what? Look, it always makes me think of, all right, that movie, um, Lost in Translation. Are you familiar yes. with it? Kevin yeah. Spacey, right? No, no. Uh, that's. Um, Bill Murray. Bill Murray. Bill and Murray and the Japanese uh, oh, girl, what's right? the other young lady's name? Um, Scarlett Johansson. Yeah. Isn't this where they're in Japan? They're in Japan. Yes. Yeah, I love that movie. Yeah. So, all right, Bill Murray's character, mm-hmm. you know, he, he promotes their scotch, their drink, or whatever. And, yes. of course, there's these ads all over Japan, and Bill Murray's got the glass, and he's sniffing it. So every time I think of Japanese spirits, I always think of that movie because Bill Murray was like, you know, promoting the scotch. Like that was part of his thing. I guess he was this famous guy or whatever. I love that movie. It's so fantastic. Like the karaoke scene where they're just hanging out. (laughs) It just puts you like kind of totally in the mood of of what it would be like to be in Japan and and just kind of living in that moment. So I think that movie really captures what it's like to be in Japan, especially as someone who's not a native to Japan. Yes, and and I'm a big Bill Murray fan, so I really love that movie, and uh, that's what it makes me think about. So, I guess I get to be like Bill Murray's character and promote this 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 whiskey here, you know. Nice. Well, Yamazaki's <laughs> got something; they get some free marketing out of us. <laughs> yeah, may, maybe one day you'll see me on a Japanese billboard. Yes. I doubt it. All right, Yamazaki whiskey, the pioneer of Japanese whiskey. Yamazaki whiskey is Suntory's flagship single malt whiskey from Japan's first and oldest malt distillery, multi-layered with fruit and Mizunara <laughs> aromas. I'm a redneck, sorry. I don't know if I pronounced that correctly. Here, I'll give you this bottle. 
From Yamazuki was born the surprising, delicate, yet profound experience of a Japanese single malt whiskey. Spiritual and deep, made at the Yamazuki Distillery, the sole place of Japanese whiskey. Its signature multi-layer taste is highly praised by whiskey connoisseurs all around the world. Today, Suntory Single Malt uh, Whiskey, Yamakaze Whiskey, is not only the f number one single malt whiskey in Japan, but is enjoyed in more than 35 countries. Wow. And I have to say, what a beautiful job of marketing. Like their website, like the photography, it just looks so on point. And of course, we don't have the full size bottle here to, to appreciate in person. We only have the small taste. However, looking at the website, the bottles are on point. They are Dude, beautiful. The color is beautiful. Look at that 55 year old. That is <sighs> like, oh, like That's a ten thousand dollar bottle, man. Dude, like, for like, it's like wow. your eyes can drink that just with the color. It, it's like the most. You just ridiculous. want it. Yes. You 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 want it. <laughs> now I will tell you this mini bottle. This little tiny mini bottle retails for right now on the secondary for like 70 bucks for Just like for a pour for like a one pour wow and i mean <laughs> that just goes to show you the insanity that the the whiskey well big thanks to your through. brother for hooking us up on this yeah <laughs> let's give it a smell Ooh, Ooh. baby a 12 yeah. year statement huh yeah 12 wow. year single single malt japanese whiskey so so comparing this to like a 12 year old mccallan matt yes I don't know. Look, 12-year McAllen is a go-to for me. I love mm -hmm. it. It's a great scotch. Well, you have to remember, this is a scotch-style whiskey. This not... This, I mean, they can, the Japanese always put their own spin on things, and they like to do things that are very, like, harmonious, very, like, mm -hmm. technical, that are... And filled with art. Yes. Everything's art to them. Yeah, so I've actually... I'll be honest... I've never had the Yamazaki 12 and I've never had the Hibiki 17. You've never had either one. So this will be the true first, you know, reaction to these two, these two alcohols. You ready? Yes. All right. I'll tell you what, let's separate it so that everybody can see our reaction. So okay. you first nose. Sweet. It is sweet, but I'll tell you what it does. It does kind of have an alcoholic, like sense to it. I got so, that vibe as well. Yeah, I'm. I mean, we'll see how it goes. Give it a taste. It's definitely scotch. Yeah, that tastes like a Macallan Twelve. Doesn't it? it finishes like a Macallan Twelve as well, well. Son, I will be the judge of that. You will be the judge, but I'm telling you right now. Brass tax, that is a McAllen 12. Okay. I'm going to call your bluff. Yep. All right. Here I go. Nose. Mmm, that finish is much better, though. Mm -hmm. It has a really good finish. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm. And give it a taste. Mm. Smoky. Yes. Pete. Yes. Caramel. Lovely. Dude, the finish is pretty good. I'm sitting here Lovely. just like, you're drinking that, and I'm just sitting here like... You're experiencing... I'm like yeah. experiencing the different complexities that are breaking down on this finish, man. Like... Wow. And it I'm... so good. I'm not a huge fan of scotch, but for me, the finish on that is worth it. That certainly exceeds a 12-year McCallum. Yeah. Now, um, look. It's, it's, it's not... Damn, a that mystery. is good. <laughs> I, 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 I am a McCall I'm a 12-year-old McCallan fanboy. <clears throat> and I have to say, I don't know. This Dude, is this might be a, I'm a, not a, a little Scotch better. Guy. I am not a Scotch guy. You know this. But I'm not a huge fan of the nose. I'm not a huge fan of the palate. But for some reason, that finish, it just keeps mm. you coming back, man. So... My assessment is that the finish is probably, I'd say the finish on this is probably better than a 12-year-old McAllen, 
but the initial nose and the initial hit of your palate mm -hmm. on the Macallan might be slightly superior. So the two mm. are neck and neck. I wouldn't say it exceeds the quality of 12-year-old Macallan, but gosh, if it isn't close. Yeah. And That's, gosh, if it isn't punching in the same weight class. It is definitely in the same weight class because I'm tasting it and it's like, the finish makes you want to drink more. Yes. I don't, like, you know, like I keep like, I'm thinking to myself, like if I had more, I would probably drink it because I'm, mm. tr I'm still trying to break down. I'm still trying to break down what these different complexities are of what's going on in my mouth. Yeah. That's really wow. good, man. <clears throat> you know, I'm, I'm not a huge scotch fan by any means, but that was really good. Now, now look, here, here's the thing too, to consider is that there's a heck of a lot of people that might say, well, your palate is contaminated and you're pouring it all in the same glass. I mean, look. You can you definitely know, just, tell just the Just because something costs a lot of money doesn't mean that you have to assume that it's automatically going to be really good. Right? This is Or true. that something that doesn't cost a ton of money, if it's a cheaper libation, uh, one must not assume that it may not still be a really solid choice for the money. And uh, I would say that at a ratio of cost... Mm -hmm. to let's just say pleasure or, or or taste i would say that at the cost of a a, a, a very reasonable 38 to 42 dollars that so far the maker's mark cash strength for the money is is really starting to to, to kind of catch on to me a little bit now look the xr is is wonderful but that's a different weight it's class. It's completely in a different weight class. Yep. Now, when we're looking at things in the same weight class, so far the maker's mark cash strength is on point. Yes. And I mean, as I hope you'll agree with that assessment. I, I agree. <laughs> um, and I think we haven't had the Hibiki, and I like the Ooh. Yamazaki 12. But if you said to me, Matt, what would you like more, the XR or the Yamazaki 12? I would price. I mean, for sure, the XR is definitely well, yeah. way above that. Oh, well, yeah. And I mean, but that's just because I'm not a Scotch guy. I am. That's right. I'm not. Um, so next up, we it's have. It's okay to, you know, acknowledge our biases. Yes. And, right. you know, for what it's worth, I think. I think. Um, bottle down. I think Centauri did. Thank you, sir. Wait, no, it's. I'm I'm doing the read on this one. You are, but I have to pull it up. Oh, okay. Are you that drunk? Well, no, no, I have it on my phone. I can do the well, read on Well, I'll my pull phone. it up so okay. that we have a All you right, know, guys. We have it on the big screen. So, here. this Habiki 17 is a Suntory whiskey. It's coming from the same distillery as the Yamazaki 12. Now, the Habiki 17 is a blended whiskey, which means they take different batches, different uh, malts and they're blending it together at the end so they might have three or four different uh, batches that they're mixing together and that's perfectly fine the the crown royal is also uh, a blended whiskey johnny walker also a blended whiskey wines all wines are blended there's no such thing as a single malt wine so really what you're running into is that when you when you look at a single malt whiskey, it's all coming from one batch of that recipe. So they no longer sell the Habiki 17, to my knowledge. Um, they sell the the Habiki, what they call Habiki Harmony, with no age statement. So this is going to be a treat in and of itself. Wow. And so the Habiki 17 is inspired by traditional Scottish whiskeys. Suntory is known for its unique approach to creating premium Japanese cask aged whiskey. This 17 year old Habiki is the embodiment of Suntory's acclaimed blending, sentimentally harmoniously combining Scottish and Japanese culture influences and malt and grain whiskeys. Defined by a light and somewhat fruity aroma, the 17-year-old Hibiki blended whiskey is masterfully distilled and expertly crafted summer whiskey and represents the essential drinking for anyone with a passion for the collision of worlds that is Japanese whiskey. Did you just hear that? Did you? They said the collision. <laughs> 
That's wow. the first time I've ever read someone use the word collision outside of a car. Well, hmm. at least they admit it. Yes. I mean, look, here's the thing with, with Japanese culture. You know, they approach everything from such a standpoint of just art. Yeah. You know, everything's art to them. You know, even engineering is art. So they, they, they approach everything from such a, a, a like a delicate balance of, of just making sure that they approach it with the absolute sanctity that it deserves. Mm -hmm. And um, I've always been intrigued by the Japanese and their take on various whiskeys, scotch, and things like that. So they do such a fantastic job. I've, I've never had a suntory style, you know, like a Japanese whiskey that I didn't like. They're always good. Well... Let's just see if price point, if peop, there's people out there that shop by price point, they say, hey, this bottle is really expensive. Therefore, that must mean that it's really good. Not necessarily always true. That's right. This particular bottle on the secondary, because it's no longer produced, is about $1,200. So let's just say you're. For that little? No, no, no. no like oh, a full oh, 700, for, oh, okay, uh, 700 yeah. milliliter bottle would be $1,200. $1,200 bottle? So, so this pour is like 150 bucks, roughly. Yes, but that doesn't necessarily equal Flavor Town. Like we're gonna be the judge of what this is. And all right, you got the taste first last time. Yes. This time I get the taste. You go for it, man. All right, and we're gonna do it in order so we can get everyone's reaction. Mm -hmm. Color. Okay, it doesn't have that like kind of amber vibe going on. It's it's it's. It looks like Budweiser. <laughs> yeah, it is a little Sorry. light. On, it is a little light on the color department. All right, we're gonna swirl it around. Oh yeah, definitely sticks to the glass. All right, let's give it a smell. Ooh, okay. Hmm. I'm getting that what what Jack Daniels would describe as spice. <laughs> which yes. gives me that very alcohol-like uh, kind of vibe. Let so me try backing off a bit. To answer your question, this pour is $229, according to the website that you would be purchasing it from. Mm. Well, it smells beautiful. It does have sort of a flashy alcohol-like vibe when you smell it like it yeah. kind of takes you as whoa <laughs> well let's let's read the tasting notes and then we can go for it okay so the nose woody malt coated and citrus zest sweet fruits and dark melted chocolate over warm bacon <laughs> what is that what they really said <laughs> yes <laughs> warm bacon warm bacon huh uh, i don't really get the bacon but you know, to each their own. And, and guys, honestly, that is why you have to be very wary of the marketing fluff. So if we move on to taste, the taste is grain cereal, which would be like your Cheerios, Honey Nut Cheerios, Frosted Flakes, like your grain cereals, mm -hmm. and vanilla bean essence, shelled nuts, and cut wood baked with orange citrus. That is totally not the description yeah. I would expect. I would not expect. That is not what I'm getting from that nose. But no. we haven't tasted it yet. We All could right. be completely... Me first. Yeah. Okay. And then the finish, delicate and light. That's it. So you first. Go okay. for it. Hmm. All right. Going for it. Wow. <laughs> really? The face says it all. Wow. It's so good. Ooh. Well. Now I'm a Scotch man, so for me, I'm 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 slightly biased that I do love Scotch. All right. Well, let's give it a go. Ooh. Nose is pretty good. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Uh, you know? <laughs> the lick says it all. <laughs> when I said I wasn't a Scotch man, I think they nailed Scotch because I'm not a Scotch man. And despite the price point, it's not for me. It's wow. def, but you know, it, in essence, it does have a like woody smoky earthy earthy like it's a very very grounded flavor profile it's, it's like you're drinking water out of a bog yeah it's just not my <laughs> jam the yamazaki was good that xr was a phenomenal the habiki 17 is just not not it man it's not it for me not it for me all right i'm gonna finish this off yes It is a very delicate and light finish, though. Like, the finish, it's, like, in and out. Like, you drink it, you taste it, and it's gone. Like, I no longer have that that flavor on my palate right now. It's gone. Okay, so we're running a little bit over on time. Oh, That's okay. Are we? Well, okay. I was not it's expecting okay. that. We, we've gone well over an hour. That's okay. <laughs> but good things, you know, are meant to be, you know, we take some time and we enjoy it, right? Yes. So. All right, so a quick synopsis, uh, just to wrap things up. I, I know it's been kind of a long podcast, and those of you that have stayed with us, thank you so much for Listening. supporting what we do. And, and, and look, we are on a journey to discover the wonderful libations of the planet, and, yes. and that's what we're attempting to do here. Now, if we had to, let's just say, categorize these. Mm-hmm. Now, I, I know it's it's difficult sometimes. Now, obviously, we know XR is like right on top. But um, what order would you say in terms of... You know, if I was putting these in order of like, hey, Matt, you're in charge of getting drinks for, you know, this event. For sure, it would be... Maker's Mark would be like the go-to for like your slightly above entry level, like the discerning gentleman that is a little bit more than... Than say Jack Daniels, you know, the XR would be for your high end customer or your high end guest that is really wanting something. The gentleman Jack, I would put as like that entry level, like, hey, I like to drink, I want something better than like the sour mash. And between the two Centauri's, I would definitely go with the Yamazaki. I think the Yamazaki 12 single malt uh, was head and shoulders above the Habiki 17. I agree. Yeah. Jameson, I mean, look. That's a good party drink. Not going to lie. <laughs> it is. But here's the thing. That's what Jameson excels at. Mm -hmm. As being a affordable and approachable spirit that the average man can buy and, and enjoy. And you know what? In, in that regard, Jameson wins. I mean, for being so good for what it costs, the Gentleman Jack and the Jameson are on point. Yes. They're beautiful. They're wonderful spirits. I have to say, the makers cut above. Yeah. The makers For sure. beats the other two out. Obviously, XR beats everything out. And then the Suntory, you know, Japanese whiskeys, of course, are beautiful and time honored. And the art form that goes into their whiskey making is just absolutely fantastic. You know, I'd have to say, for the money. Out of everything that we've drank so far, the makers wins. I think I, I think for it's, it's for it's for the financial pinch. Yeah, I, you know, I think it's makers. unfair. I think it's unfair to put the makers and the XR in the same division because they're different. I think the makers wins in your everyday category. If you removed XR from the equation, makers arguably would be Oh, on for top. sure. For sure. Yeah, absolutely. Especially when you consider the financial the, yeah. You know, the money. Yep. But the best in this building right now <laughs> yeah. is the XR. <laughs> that XR is fantastic. It was super you know, smooth. I purchased those three bottles, you know, and uh, I, I got them for a fair price. And I decided to just buy all three and speculate. And glad I did. Yeah. They are fantastic. And I mean, for what it's worth, the Japanese whiskeys were, were good. Mm-hmm. I do think that there might be a little bit of hype. On is like, that a two hundred fifty dollar pour? No, absolutely. Not. I mean, now if I was like a Japanese business guy that was trying to impress his like clients and he's trying to do this, 
yes, that would probably be the the go to drink. But as a consumer, not really. All right. When I was in Vegas, all right, we had a thirty year McAllen. I, hey, I was there. I you were there. Yes, I was. We tasted <laughs> yes. it. Okay. I'm so sorry. All right. Look. So that poor that was it for Trump. Listen, that poor, the 30-year-old McAllen, I think they charged me $350 Rough for me. one poor. Yeah. And we took that poor and, look, listen, we shared it. Look, we all took a sip. There ain't nothing growing in that thing. I mean, look, <laughs> everything's dead in that drink. But we all had a taste of the 30-year-old McAllen. It was like a $250, $300 pour. It was a lot of money, but... I wanted to try it because, you know, I can't buy a whole bottle of 30-year-old McAllen or 25-year-old McAllen. So sometimes just a quick pour is the only way you can experience it. I mean, you have to invest in that experience. So based on everything that we had here and, and primarily looking really close at the Crown Royal XR compared to the 30-year-old McAllen that you had in Vegas. I mean, Comparisons? I mean, XR was better. Yeah. That's just my personal opinion. I'm not a Scotch guy, but I okay. will say the the experience of the bartender looking at you and saying, "Sir, it's three hundred dollars a pour," <laughs> and then you going okay. in the Trump yeah, Hotel, yeah, and going <laughs> and like, <laughs> like that was probably worth it. It was just hilarious. It was worth it. Look. Out of everything we had, I mean, the XR is fantastic, but that Makers... Yeah. Those two are the front runners for sure. 100%. Boys and girls, thank you so much for, you know, in, enjoying this flight with us. And, uh, you know, we have many more flights on the way, and we have so many more podcasts that we're doing. And thank you so much for supporting what we do. And uh, look, you know, we, we, we've had copious quantities of alcohol. Anything you want to say before you leave? Man? No, man, I'm lit. I'm <laughs> no, <good>. come on. <laughs> I'm, I'm so lit. <laughs> oh, those Canadians. Now, now, look, the XR was a healthy pour. It was, dude, that was like half the glass, man. I was looking at that <laughs> look, glass. And I, I knew like, that we would crap. enjoy it so much. So Woo. I decided you to get a little right, healthy though. on you the are, pour. You are correct. All right. So thank you guys so much for tuning in to today's podcast. We have so many more on the way. Check us out every week. We post on all of the various uh, podcast forums on Friday, and then the video version goes live on the Iraq Veteran 8888 YouTube channel on Saturdays. All right, so thank you so much for the support. Go over to Ballistic Inc. and pick yourself up a snazzy new T-shirt. That's one way you can support the channel. And uh, we'll see you soon. Many more flights on the way. I know we went a little over on time, but you know what? Sometimes great things are just, it takes time to enjoy. So... Have a good one. We'll see you soon. Bye. Bye. Thanks for listening to Life, Liberty, and Pursuit. If you enjoyed the show, be sure to subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and anywhere else podcasts are found. Be sure to leave us a five-star review. We'd really appreciate that. You can support us over on Ballistic Inc. by picking yourself up some merch. And remember, guys, dangerous freedom. Have a good one.